Hello guys, I am Dr. Abhishek Ranjan Pati. I am Associate Professor in Department of Oral Medicine and a Clinician and you all know I run a YouTube channel which is an educational channel based upon dentistry and the name of the channel is Sci Dental Vlogs and I have been associated with an academy. I will be taking a course on RCT course for beginners. So seeing this response like such an overwhelming response, uh, I am really happy and by God's grace with all your support. I am going to take this course now on and deep gratitude from my heart. First of all, we will be talking about all the why this course is important for you all. Root canal treatment is the bread and butter of dentistry. Before starting the any kind of root canal, we all know even if we do surgeries, we need to know the anatomy. So even the tooth has a particular anatomy and there are so many variations in the anatomy of a particular tooth. That's why the first chapter of this course is knowing your anatomy, knowing the anatomy of the tooth. I know this all things are given in all the various root canal books as well, endodontic books as well like the Grossman. But still as a clinician practicing from the past 13 years, I have been gaining experience and a lot of tips and tricks which will be useful for you in your practice. First of all, we will start with the most common anterior tooth which you really get happy that is the upper anterior tooth. If you get in your clinic, you'll be very uh, like you'll be very excited. Okay, it's very easy. But guys, a lot of perfectly done anterior root canal cases also get failed. The reason I'll be telling you. So the most common organism which causes the failure of the root canal is E. fecalis, right? And we all know the central incisor. The average length of the central incisor is around 23.5 mm, and it's ovoid in shape. The canal shape is little bit ovoid mesiodistally. So the maxillary central incisor and then this is the CBCT ima image and you can see the pulp chamber is ovoid in shape and as I go down till the apex of the tooth and you can see this white image here. This is the gutta parka which is perforated. This is the sagittal section and you can see the perforation in the labial plate and the gutta perca is moving out of the tooth into the soft tissues and this is cyst which has formed in the central inside the tooth. Whenever we are doing the root canal of the upper anterior teeth, we have to keep many things in mind. First of all, the apical one third. So what is the motto in the root canal? that your file or your instrument should be going from the coronal aspect till the apex of the tooth. It should reach till the apex of the tooth and your filling should also be there till the apex of the tooth. So we all think that root canal has a very good margin of safety. Suppose you didn't do the root canal properly and you left little bit 2 to 3 mm of root space. It's still there and you have not obturated. So what will happen? Initial one year, two years, nothing will happen. But the patient will come back to you again with some infection, then again we have to call some consultant and do a re-RCT. So that gives a bad name. So why not to do the root canal very nicely in the first place itself. So these all things we'll be knowing in this course and uh, how to get the straight line access, what and all instruments should be used, we'll be telling you in this course. So before starting of the root canal treatment, it's very important to know the source of the pain. That means from exactly where the pain is coming from. Suppose the tooth is having a sharp lancinating pain which is the activation of A delta fibers and upon removal of the stimuli, what is the stimuli? Maybe some cold water, ice cream or hot water. So even after removal of the stimulus, if the pain immediately subsides, then it's a reversible vulpitis. And suppose if the tooth is having a boring, gnawing kind of pain and the pain doesn't reduce even after removal of the stimulus and it stays for one half an hour or one hour or more than 10 minutes then it is indicative of chronic irreversible pulpitis. So before starting the root canal treatment of any kind of tooth and if you see there is a proximal caries by taking a radiograph and we check on the tender on percussion test. So if the pain is there in that particular tooth, in that tooth only we have to do the root canal treatment. For example, there is a 4.6 and 4.7 right molar tooth and you cannot see the caries occlusally. Then how we have to diagnose from where this pain is coming from? So we have to pass air in between the two teeth by using the three-way syringe and suddenly the patient will give 
uh, some kind of response okay this is the place from where i'm getting the pain so before starting of the rct there are few instruments and few things which you have to keep in mind in order to find out the canals the first instrument which is very essential for every beginner is the dg16 probe which you need to have in your clinic treatment there are only 3 4 instruments which you need to have that is number 2 burr number 4 round burr and a ex24 burr with a non cutting tip as well as the dg16 probe there is one important landmark which is always essential for us while doing the root canal treatment that is the cemento enamel junction of any tooth so that is the gold standard for any canal or any tooth to find the floor of the pulp chamber so you should not go beyond the cj of any tooth even if you are not getting the this is opening holes so you have to cross your cavity extension across the cj so cj is the baseline from where you will not extend your cavity extension another instrument which you require while doing the root canal treatment is a small spoon excavator as well as the gates gidden drill number 1 and number 2 i know many of you have heard for the first time the gates gidden drill it's a long shank instrument and which is required in the root canal where the orifices are very small and you just have to extend just below the coronal extent of the root canal so that i will give you in the demo and the demo video is going to come in the next video where i'll be showing how to exactly do the root canal what is the process the instrumentations so it will come in various phases so the first tooth which i am taking in order to show the root canal treatment is the upper anterior tooth so first of all what we have to do i have already done the access opening and i have closed it with temporary filling so what burr you have to take you have to take a number 4 round burr as you can see here so first of all whenever we are approaching the root canal of the particular tooth we have to approach from the palatal aspect of the tooth and we have to punch a hole over here on the center of the cingulum area and uh, we should keep in mind that we should not go go too much around this other way there will be labial perforation as i showed you in the cbct of the particular tooth so the tooth your uh, limitation of your burr should be till the cj of the tooth so this is the cement enamel junction of the tooth and here we have first we'll make the punch hole like this so now i made this punch hole so i have already done the access opening now what we have to do is we have to remove the excessive dentin which is present in and around the tooth so this access opening has been done and as you all know this is k file number 8 just to check the patency of the canal so i told in the video there should be a straight line access there like this should file should go straight into the canal what i am doing is just i am seeing whether the access opening is done or not so just we have to take the file like this and we have to just insert into the canal a little bit with the watch winding motion what what is watch winding motion just like this this watch winding motion will ensure that you don't form any kind of ledge in the inside the root canal so before doing all this we have to determine the root canal length by taking the radiograph we insert the file like this and after that we take a iop of the particular tooth suppose the root canal length is 21 mm or 20.5 mm then you have to note it down and just just to check the patency and see uh, the the shape of the canal is almost ovoid in shape and uh, very nicely it's done so we have to remove the dentin from the edges like you can see here it's the dentin which is there on the sides we all have to remove and the upper part also just for just for a quick revision i'll just show you so this is the file sequence this is the number 8 file which i used in the beginning for canal exploration then again this is the purple color file the number 10 file which i use for uh, canal exploration these are all two person files right then after this i use the number 15 file for the shaping of the canal this is number 15 this is white in color then we again use the number 20 number file k file this is number 20 as you can see here this is yellow in color 
now again I use the number 25 file for filing of the tooth so this all are two percent files we can even use more after this there are this is a 30 number file which is blue in color as you can see here so we'll keep it here then again it's the green color file which is 35 number and then again is the number 40 file so till 20 we have to compulsory use for getting the straight line access if the canal is curved you have to use till number 25 red file okay we'll keep it aside now we'll coming back coming back to the pro table files what is the sequence the first is the coronal flaring file or the sx files instead of it we can also use the gates hidden drill so this one you can use in only 5 to 6 canals this one you can use in many canals around 15 to 20 but you have make sure you autoclave them then is the S1, shaping 1, shaping 2, F1 and F2 we have to do the extra dentin from the floor and from the side and from the axial walls so this is the EX24 burr in which the tip is non cutting and uh, we have to just run it little bit smoothly We have to extend the walls in all directions. So, why we are doing this? We are doing this so that our files go straight up till the apex. So, many people ask me like, sir, uh, how we know that the canal is there or not? So, what we have to do is, we have to do a champagne bubble test. Just a little bit of 2-3 uh, drops of sodium hypochlorite 5% you have to put inside the opening and you can see the bubbles coming out of it. So when you see the bubbles coming out of it that means you have found the canals and now I am using the SX Pro Taper file which is just to enlarge the opening of the canal you just have to insert it like this inside the tooth and rotate it 3 fourth and then reverse rotation and then pull. So this is the motion of using the Pro Taper SX file. So you should not use it in more than 5 to 6 cases otherwise what will happen your sx files may break after using the sx file you have to again irrigate it with saline and sodium hypochlorite solution in equal concentrations after the irrigation i am just doing the irrigation because i have to make the video short so i am doing it a little bit faster after that we have to again recapitulate with the number 8 file so there are various ways of doing it suppose you are doing with the number 8 file then you again go with the number 10 file then number 15 file so this is purple in color this is k file number 10 so you insert it till the working length suppose the working length is 15 mm so you have to set the working length till 15 mm and then insert it into the canal and then prepare it in file it in all the directions circumferential filing has to be done So after you file it with cover number 10 number file, next we are using the number 15 file, K file. Then uh, you again insert till, till the working length of the tooth. Then you again file it in all directions. So till 15, 20 we have to enlarge. And this is the 20 number file. This is the K file number 20. And uh, again we are using like this so why we are using the k files to make a straight line access okay initially just you cannot insert the pro taper files rotary will come later how to use the rotary but we'll first learn to how to do with k files and pro taper so this is the way you should do it and you should file in all the directions so this is just i am giving one stroke but you have to give around 10 to 15 strokes so that the walls of the canal are very smooth then again after each and every step don't forget to irrigate the canals properly after irrigation now we have sure that we have received the you have achieved the straight line access you first use the shaping file and just insert it this is S1 this is this is the S1 the purple one then again irrigate then use the S2 Shaping 2 file, 3 4 motion, then 
we are using the finishing file so this finishing file is f1 file so you can enlarge till the f1 or the f2 which is the red color file